What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back with a morning recap on this beautiful Friday, March 31st, 2023. And today we have some, well, let's just say yesterday was quite frankly some of the biggest news we have gotten in, I would say, this year. I think there's some big stories that happened yesterday that we should discuss now, this video could potentially be 30 minutes long. That's how much morning recap we have for today. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter account in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for $3 a month, you could join Real American Politics, which is a phenomenal deal as it helps support the daily content we all know and love. You love the daily content? Well, that is the best way to support the daily content on this channel is by joining the channel. I recommend and hope you join the channel today. And of course, a big shout out to the Kelvin Coolidge Project and Real American Politics on Twitter. Again, follow both of them. They'll be in the top right corner. Click the information button whatever it's called on youtube and you can follow those twitter accounts they're both great kelvin coolidge project phenomenal conservative i know he's a great guy so i hope and recommend you follow twitter accounts today all right let's get in today's morning recap so of course the story of this decade i would say happened yesterday former president donald john trump has been indicted by the Manhattan Grand Jury on more than 30 counts related to business fraud and, I am assuming, the Stormy Daniels nonsense. Guys, let me be clear. Let, let me say this right off the bat. Trump is your Republican nominee in 24. De DeSantis has no chance. It doesn't freaking matter what you do. He's got the nomination. He's got it now. There's nothing you can say or do, barring, you know... Trump gets, you know, thrown in jail and it's like 15 felonies. He gets somehow convicted. Fine. That's the only time that it would knock Trump off the nomination. Outside of that, he's the nominee now. There's no question in my mind, he's got it. What I originally thought was going to be a fascinating primary, it's not going to really be that fascinating at all. Now, Donald Trump faces more than 30 counts related to business fraud in an indictment for the Manhattan Grand Jury, according to two sources familiar with the case. The first time in American history that a current or former president has faced criminal charges. Let me be clear. You know, I always, you know, Trump said he's going to lock Clinton up and all that stuff. There is an unwritten rule that you don't go after former or current leaders, right, in a, the opposing party. Why? Because it creates a precedent. It creates a precedent where we're going to start these political witch hunts every five seconds. Again, Clinton should be in jail. But I do understand why some people wouldn't want to push that. I, I hate that, but I do understand at the same time. But with Trump's case, it's a bunch of nonsense. And people are saying, you know, this is a 20D chess move to you know, get Trump the nomination, and will kill him the general. First of all, no. Democrats may be smarter than Republicans at the party level, but they're not smart enough to think, oh, this is a 20D chess move that we're going to get Elvin Bragg to indict Trump. Is it just because, you know, this is my opinion, Bragg wants to do this for political reasons. He hates Trump, and it benefits him politically. Trump, uh, Ellen Bragg, at least, it benefits him. He's not caring about 2024 or all this stuff. He's just deranged. And if this was so helpful to, or hurts Trump in the general, yada, yada, and Democrats want, you know, Trump to be the nominee and all this other stuff, why was nearly the entire Manhattan district office, right? Basically, everybody was saying, this is stupid. Don't charge him. Because not only does this make no legal sense, but there was rumors saying this helps Trump politically. And you have some of the smartest people in politics saying this helps Trump get win the presidency. Elon Musk said this helps Trump. 
many never Trumpers said this helps Trump. So you just add on top of that, Democrats are thinking this is a 700D chess move. No, they're just deranged. They hate the guy. That's what this is really about. Now, the indictment has been uh, filed under seal and will be announced in the coming days. The charge is not publicly known. We probably have a good or good guess to say it's a Stormy Daniels stuff, which that alone, statues of limitations say that alone throws the case out. If you don't know statutes of limitations, essentially the deadline for when you could charge somebody for something. It's like five years usually. It's been, what, seven years? They don't care. They're just going to do it anyways. So, it's two years too late for that. And the rest of the stuff sounds like it's statute of limitations too. Because, quite frankly, they've been trying to go after Trump since 2015 and 2016. And even 2017, they started that crap. So even those, we could probably assume, uh, go under statute of limitations. Plus, with this business fraud stuff, do you really think Trump doesn't have hundreds of lawyers and attorneys looking through every single document at his company? So even if there's fraud that happened, Trump would not have any guilt. He didn't do it. It was somebody that was one of his attorneys if he made a mistake. Even then, they know what they're supposed to do. You can't charge Trump for that. You know, he has hundreds of attorneys and, and accountants looking through every little piece of paper. So, the fact that he has 30 counts of business fraud? If there is fraud that happened, it wasn't Trump that did it. Sure, his company may have, but it wasn't him. It may have been a corrupt attorney and corrupt accountant that lied. The information we still don't know about, but that's probably what, worst case scenario, that's what happened. This is delusional. Why do you think nobody wanted to touch this case except this loser? If this was politically a great move for Democrats, you would see everybody trying to pile on. But many people, including many Democrat scholars and attorneys, say, Don't! Don't charge him! What are you doing? Because not only is it legally stupid, it's politically stupid. So, that's what happened with the Trump indictment. And I think many people, this is going to backfire. Whether you like it or not, this is going to backfire in some way. If it backfires next Tuesday with the Supreme Court race, maybe it boosts turnout. Either way, this is going to be one of the biggest political backfires. Everybody is saying it, except people that, these low-life losers that have nothing but Twitter all day, they're saying, oh, this is going to give Biden the presidency, yada, yada, yada. Really? Why is everybody else saying, smart people, mind you, saying, this is going to backfire on Democrats badly? I mean, you got Nancy Pelosi out here saying, oh, Trump has to prove his innocence. No, he doesn't. You got to prove he's guilty. Innocent before uh, innocent before proven guilty, right? It's not you're guilty before proven innocent. So this is going to backfire somehow. I hope it does next Tuesday because Wisconsin, if this doesn't get you to turn out for Justice Daniel Kelly, nothing will. So, until we see more of the counts, though, we really can't say much more. Hopefully, we get it probably, I'm assuming, Monday. That's my guess. I'm fascinated to see what they actually charged him for, but my guess is most of it fa uh, falls under statute of limitations. And, quite frankly, again, Trump, he's a businessman. He has hundreds of attorneys and accountants looking through everything. I doubt that he's going to, you know, oh, directly tells people, we got to commit business fraud, yada, yada, yada. Mm, I doubt it. So yesterday at the Tennessee Capitol, hundreds protested for tighter gun control after the Nashville shooting. Are you freaking serious right now? Hundreds of losers protested for tighter gun controls. First of all, tighter gun controls want to prevent what happened in Nashville. Can people understand this? We are having shootings more and more, right? Yet, we've never had this problem before. We've never had this problem. Look at every graph. Look at every statistic. Shootings have skyrocketed in the last four or five years. Is that to do with guns almost suddenly becoming, you know, everywhere? 
I, I doubt it. I think this is a society having a crisis. You have a mental illness crisis in America with a bunch of idiots that need mental help. They're shooting up places. That's the truth here. You're not going to ban guns for hunters because, oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ban the guns for hunters, so that, that's going to stop shootings. Why me, a law-abiding citizen, gets punished for what somebody else does? And a lot of these people, there was a video that showed, they said there were seven victims at the Nashville school shooting. Be noteful, there were six that died, six that got shot. You know where they say was the seventh victim? The shooter. I am not kidding you. These people are filth. They are seriously saying the shooter was a victim. I, what? You're telling me three kids died, but we're going to include the shooter as a victim in this? These people are low-life losers, have nothing to do better with their lives. They have worthless lives. They're useless to society. None of them work, I bet. And quite frankly, it's sickening. It is sickening people are defending these protesters. Where's the insurrection talks? They do the same thing the people at the Capitol did on January 6th. Yet nobody is saying it, and arguably they were more violent in Nashville. Some of those videos you saw, dear lord. But either way, what is wrong with society? You're calling the shooter a victim? When he killed, or it killed, three kids and three adults. I, I just can't with some of these people anymore. They're delusional. They're crazy. We need to reopen the mental asylums in this country. That's how you solve a lot of these shootings. Throw these people in a mental asylum. Get them help. And our shootings would decline by 90%. We're going to always have shootings. It's a disgrace. It's terrible we always have shootings. But tighter gun control doesn't lead to any decline in shootings. They've done studies. Even Harvard did studies on this. There's no correlation between gun control and less school shootings. Or less shootings in general. So, how is this going to do anything? Plus, gun control is still popular. These hundreds of people are basically the only people in the state of Tennessee that are for gun control. Let's be real here. Let's just be 100% honest. I mean... You know, basic background checks. It failed in Maine. You know, the basic, you know, we ought to do a background check on everybody. It failed, which is arguably the most popular gun control or gun prevention. So, if it fails in Maine, which I know Maine's a bit more of a pro-gun state, how do you think it would fail in, how, think, how badly do you think it would fail in Tennessee? Bruh. I can't even imagine. It's a joke that... Basically, everybody that supports getting rid of guns was at this rally on, uh, I, I would say, yesterday, uh, Thursday. It's sickening, but these people are grifting off the lives that were lost at the school shooting. Even Instead of, you know, focusing on the fact that the shooter was a mentally ill woman that pretended to be a man that needed help but didn't get any, and so they normalize it as, oh, this is completely normal. And totally, the manifesto won't prove that the transgender cult is very violent. But we just got to see what happens. Luckily, the people in the uh, GOP in Tennessee, they don't give a shit what these protesters think. They're going to pass what's right, which is more, less gun control. So the Tennessee GOP, they don't piss around with this stuff. Well, it's looking like that Finland will be a member of the, in NATO. Turkey's parliament has finally ratified Finland's membership in NATO. Now, let me be clear. I really, I really don't care if Finland joins or not. What I do think, however, is these people are saying that, oh, tr uh, Russia's not getting surrounded. They're fear-mongering. Um, they just, we just invited Finland to be part of NATO. Again, I don't care what happens in you know, Eastern Europe, I really don't care. But I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, Russia has a point they're kind of surrounded. I'm not, I'm not saying they're good guys or bad guys or whatever, but this is kind of proves the point that they are kind of getting surrounded. Now, that doesn't mean you know, we're, we're going to go to war with Russia, hopefully, but either way, it's pretty big development for Finland joining 
Turkey's parliament on Thursday ratified Finland's application to join NATO, lifting the last hurdle in the way of the Nordic countries' long-delayed ascension into the Western military alliance. Yeah, Turkey was kind of like the one nation holding out. All 276 lawmakers voted in favor of Finland's bid, days after Hungary's parliament also endorsed Finland. This will make the whole NATO family stronger and safer, NATO Secretary General Jen Sullenberg wrote on Twitter in welcoming Turkey's action. I really don't see how adding Finland really changes much. I mean, it, it just kind of just proves Russia's point, but that doesn't mean they're good. I'm just saying that it kind of does prove their point that they are surrounded like, yeah, um, we are currently having Finland on our bold, uh, border. We got Poland, Hungary, Romania, etc. There's a lot of countries on the border with Russia, now including Finland, that are part of NATO. Now, people are saying that Finland was going to get invaded by Russia. No, they weren't. Why would Russia want Finland? What, what strategic purpose does having this annexing Finland get? So, again, I don't really care with NATO, but I guess it is a great addition for NATO to expand into the Nordic countries. I believe there's only a couple countries left in Europe, I think, including Belarus and a couple others that aren't part of NATO just yet, but Finland is one of the last countries that wasn't part of NATO that is all but guaranteed to join NATO at this point in time. Now, speaking of Russia, and again, like I said before, I really don't care about Russia or Ukraine because this conflict doesn't serve our interests whatsoever. I really don't even know what's been happening for the past couple months. That's how disengaged I've been about this whole conflict. Either way, Russia did do some crappy things, all right, including arresting an American journalist named Evan Gershkovics on spying charges. Now, this is Russia we're talking about. I really doubt he was a spy. I just think that they're arresting him because he's an American journalist. But who knows? Maybe some magical way it turns out this guy was some CIA informant or something crazy like that. But either way, for the first time in nearly 40 years... Russian authorities arrested an American journalist on espionage charges. Evan Gurkchevich on the Wall Street Journal was detained on Wednesday while reporting in central Russia. It's an escalation of the Kremlin campaign that has targeted independent media, opposition politicians, and critics of full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Okay, let me be clear. When I criticize one side, that doesn't mean I'm supporting either. I don't care. Both sides, quite frankly, I don't care about. I really don't care what happens with the Ukraine. I don't really care what happens to Russia. I want the war to end. I think it's a pointless war. But either way, let me be clear. Ukraine has been censoring the media, has been arresting political opponents, detaining people in the church, basically banning parts of the Orthodox Church for not being pro-Ukraine all that. It's like, why are we not talking about that? It's we only talk about anytime Russia does anything. Yes, Russia has some serious censorship problems, but Ukraine does too. Yeah, when I say that, I'm not saying Ukraine's good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying Russia's good or bad either. However, when are we going to be stop being hypocritical about it and report the fact that Ukraine has been doing the same thing? Arguably during this time span even worse, but hey, that's for my last run. I mean, they're arresting they're banning opposing parties russia hasn't even done that they allow opposing parties now I'm not saying that they they do things clean and fair perfectly but still it's like yeah we gotta we gotta talk about also ukraine doing virtually the same thing if not more extreme in the past year or so either way it is a development of russia i'm not really surprised it's i doubt this guy was a spy or a cia informant but who knows there's always that chance, I guess, that the guy was a secret spy for the CIA and, you know, he's reporting on Putin's whereabouts, like, what meal does he eat on Wednesdays at 6 p.m.? <laughs> just, yeah, it is escalation. Or I would say really escalation, just whatever. It, it is what it is. Again, hopefully the guy just doesn't get killed or anything crazy like that. I doubt it. Either way, it is Russia being Russia. So, yesterday we had some sad news. The army has stated that nine soldiers were killed after two Black Hawk helicopters crashed in Kentucky during training mission. Yep, nine soldiers sadly lost their lives. Not even in 
action. They got killed during a training mission. Uh, this is just terrible. This is absolutely terrible that nine soldiers lost their lives. And what should have been arguably the p most peaceful part of their, you know, entire time in the military, training. But it happened, and it's a sad day. For everybody that lost somebody during this occurrence, uh, prayers up to you, prayers up to the soldiers. Hopefully they're in a better place now. It's very sad this happened and shouldn't happen during a training mission. But I respect anybody that joins the military. I do. They put their lives at risk for America. And I got people, of course, my family that are in the military, a couple in the Navy, a couple in the Marines. It just I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people that were in the military or no, currently are in the military. Just prayers up to the, these nine soldiers and their families. They need all the prayers they can get. And it was the 101st uh, Airborne Division. It's just, that just, man, that's not good. That is not good that two Black Hawk helicopters crash like that. And I believe if they crash in together, I think that's what happened. Yeah, they crashed around 10 p.m. That's what it sounds like. They hit each other. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to speculate, but it is a sad day for these nine soldiers. Prayers for everybody that lost a loved one yesterday in the state of Kentucky. Well, we had another bit of college basketball news yesterday. And this one hurts me as a Badgers fan. North Texas takes out CUSA UA Bayview for first NIT championship. Yep. The team that beat Wisconsin in the semifinals wins the NIT championship. Man, this is becoming a an occurrence for the Badgers basketball team. But outside of that, congratulations to North Texas for winning the NIT championship. I know it's not as prestigious as the national title or whatever they call it for college basketball for March Madness. I know it's not as prestigious as that, but hey, winning the NIT is still pretty good. That's essentially, again, the NIT is what you would call the second tier. Like the teams that they're good or they're okay but they're not good enough to make march madness or they just couldn't win their conference title for the smaller conferences but they're still good enough that they deserve a shot at you know the nit either way congratulations to north texas for a good run i mean they came back from absurd margin against the badgers stains me it stains me to this day that that happened Either way, congratulations, and we should have our Final Four for the main tournament, I believe, this Saturday. So be on the lookout for that. Those are going to be some good games. But yeah, the NIT had a lot of good games this year. Usually the NIT is kind of just there, but I like these lower tournaments. You get to see teams that usually don't make March Madness, you know, once in a great while they do, or teams that usually do like the Badgers, but are just not that good anymore. So, congratulations to North Texas, also UAB for making a good run at the NIT. So, we also had some great news, or for a specific uh, fan base, yesterday, the NHL front. You know, we talked about how NHL is getting rid of the Pride Night crap, because there's a lot of backlash about it. Well, they're back in the news, and for something actually on the rink. Well... The Boston Bruins win wrap-up President's Trophy with OT win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yep, the Bruins win what, I guess you could call it the regular season championship. That's the President's Trophy. It's the team that gets the most points. You know, the points in the NHL is, I think it's two points for a win, one point for an uh, overtime win or a loss. I believe that's how it is. Either way, they wrapped up the President's Trophy, so they got the best point record in the NHL. And if I'm not mistaken, they could break the record. If I believe there are a couple games left for the Bruins, they could theoretically break the record, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I don't watch NHL enough. I should. I should honestly watch hockey more, but it kind of sucks without a Milwaukee market, really, or a team in Milwaukee or even Madison. But either way, they got a chance to potentially break the record, which the record goes for 62 that was set by the Detroit by Detroit in 95 and matched by Tampa Bay in 2018. So yeah, good run by Boston Bruins. Again, I'm not usually a big fan of Boston sports teams uh, because they've won a lot recently, and it sucks. I mean, they had the Patriots are kind of meh now. 
The Red Sox kind of suck now, but they won a couple World Series. The Bruins, they, they won. Then they win a title a couple years ago. Um, what else? Celtics, they won one in two thousand eight. Yeah, overall Boston's had a bit too much success in my opinion. But either way, that's it for today's morning recap. If you did enjoy this longer morning recap, I hope you did. Smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the Twitter account in the description down below. And join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.